What is up everybody and welcome back to episode 15 of our Pro Cyclist Career Mode where today we will be finishing Paris-Nice as well as doing the Ronde Van Vlaanderen, Paris-Roubaix and Liège-Bastogne-Liège Liège, what promises to be a very exciting episode. And just for a little refresher to where we are in Paris-Nice we are through stage 3, we are currently 5th place in GC but I don't see that lasting very long. We are also third in the mountains and second place nine seconds behind Quinn Simmons for young riders. So we are going to look to take at least a jersey this tour, but we're gonna have to make up our minds soon on which one that's gonna be. And up first we have stage four, an 11.9 kilometer hilly time trial, which we are definitely not suited for but recently with us putting points into stage races our prologue stat has gone up to 65 which if I'm not mistaken at 11.9 kilometers this time trial is actually going to go based off of the prologue stat more so than the time trial stat and we are off here we're gonna as always use a little bit of our energy to get up to speed right away and we're gonna set at about 89, 87 up this first hill. We're gonna try and really make our time up on the hills and then kind of relax going downhill. But so far it has not been a good day for the Kofidis team and we're looking to change that but our prologue stat at 68 and our time trial sitting there at 63 is gonna make that a pretty difficult proposition as we crank the speed up on the downhill. We don't want to use too much of our red bars. We still do have a slight uphill at the end, but as we come across the first time check, we are in 85th place. Uh, not ideal, losing 47 seconds to Ethan Hader right now, but we are just going to keep a consistent pace and try not to burn our red bar. It's been a really weird stage watching the uh, stamina go on our teammates seems like absolutely no one has ran out of the yellow bar but the red bar drops extremely fast but we are here with 2.5 K left we can ramp up our energy usage a little bit there's a nice little downhill into a little flat and uphill finish we don't want to go all out yet and we're gonna come across the line at 107th place a minute and 33 back from Ethan Hader and that's gonna put a big dent in our GC ambitions and as you can see we have dropped out of the top 10 classification we're gonna to have to work in these medium mountain stages if we want to get back into that top 5 position and at the start of stage 5 it will be one of the medium mountain stages that I was just talking about 188.5 kilometers and the profile does look like we could be in the conversation here. I would like to maybe jump in a breakaway if that's an option and at least try and get some mountain points, but we'll have to see what our race director wants from us. And with about 39k left to go, we have reached the base of the last big climb, the Col de la Mure, and our teammate Giulio Chicone has actually gone up the road and taking the lead in the King of the Mountains jersey as long as he can make it up this climb first and we are in a pretty good position here stamina wise we're gonna look to just stay with the group over this climb and then maybe try and attack over that final hill of the day and see if we can get a stage win here and claw back a little bit of that minute 29 that we're down right now and we have made it to the bottom of that last climb where we're gonna look to make our move I don't think that we're gonna be a huge threat that everybody's gonna want to close down immediately as long as we can just stay with this group through their initial attacks we should be alright but right now they're just putting in an effort that we're not willing to match we want them to burn out their legs and let us have a little bit to attack over the top right now we're still a minute 10 down from Giulio Chicone's group up front so we really don't want to be the one to chase that down but 
looks like with the moves going up the road we're gonna have to as we're already halfway through this climb we can move it up to 89 and we're just gonna wait a little bit more it seems like we do have pretty good legs right now as it starts to flatten out just a bit we want to catch that group just in front of us but we want to go right when the timing is perfect and I think we're just about to do it there's a sprint at the top of this hill which is not ideal and we are finally going to try to attack over the top and we do have a 23 second gap over our rivals right now as we try to recover a little bit of stamina for that final flat part of the stage and with about 5k to go we have extended our gap slightly we have just this little uphill left before we have a flat sprint finish and I think we are going to have just enough stamina to hold on to this as it looks like the gap coming down a little bit but it might be too little too late from the group chasing behind us as there's only two and a half kilometers left to go it looks like somebody's trying to bridge across and it looks like they're not going to be able to make it as with about 1k left we can go ahead and start our sprint we have eight seconds on the rider behind us but we are in fact going to come across the line in first place just ahead of Quinn Simmons and it's nice to finally get a stage win here at Perry Nice and we are finally back on top of the podium Quinn Simmons three seconds behind us everybody else well at least all the GC contenders 12 seconds behind so a well calculated move and a good game plan there but that will not see us jump back up into the top 10 just yet clawed back a little bit of time but there's still some stages to make up a little bit more and with that win we do get 110 experience points for our first win in the world tour and our first top three an overall great stage for Vladimir Saracen and coming off of that victory we're ready for stage six a 201.9 kilometer hilly stage we are sitting 11th in GC right now third in the young rider category I don't know if we're gonna be able to catch Quinn Simmons on either of those but if we're gonna do it this is a stage where we're gonna have to try and with 35 K left we have reached the bottom of the Col de l'Espigulier and it seems like the past few days have really taken a toll on us our recovery stat is at 65 which is pretty objectively terrible and our stamina is running out a lot faster than the rest of the field the main break still has about three minutes on us and I'm not quite sure that we're gonna make it to the end with this front group but we've got Giulio Ciccone working for us so I guess technically anything is still possible and if, as a last ditch effort here we're gonna try to attack over the top of this climb but we are getting blocked off by Vercher and I don't think that's gonna make a huge difference so we're just gonna sit up as Alaphilippe goes around but I guess our goal for the rest of this stage is just to stick with the group and try to finish even on time and secure our 11th place so we can still get back into the top 10 later on and with 8k left we've reached the last hill there have been attacks flying up the road but none that have stuck and it looks like Butrago and Vlasov trying to make one stick right now as we have to use so much of our precious little energy that we have left to try and stick with the group we really can't afford to let our yellow bar run out and hopefully there's just enough in this group for us to hold on and recover on this little downhill Bergado doing all he can to get us to the finish line in time but right now we are at the back of the group barely holding on as there's 2.5k left so regardless we will not be losing a ton of time to the favorites today but the break does stay away and we're just gonna pace ourselves into the line even 75 a little bit fast for us right now but Thibaut Nice, Matisse Passions, Sylvain Dillier ending up winning the stage but in good news for us it looks like we are going to stick to this group of favorites and come in 
just behind everybody in 31st place. And that will bring us to stage 7, the stage where things could start to go wrong for us. Nice to the Col de Torini it is 154.6 kilometer mountain stage and we are not built for this but we do have our mountain stat up to 71 now so if we play it safe and just try and stick to the back of some stronger groups if we have a good day maybe we can hold on to a position and just try not to lose a ton of time today and we have made it to the bottom of the Col de Torini 17k left to go. The climb is 14.7 kilometers long so we're still about 3k away from the official start but again our stamina in just a terrible spot. We're gonna ride this at our own pace not worry about who's attacking trying to win the stage and we're just gonna do damage control for the rest of this one. And with 4.3 left we are still in damage control mode. You can see that our stamina just clearly not there today but we are catching back up to some stragglers from the group that seem to be basically out of stamina so we're gonna go ahead and pop our energy gel and increase our effort a little bit more we don't want to run out before the end of the line but with 2.5 K left I mean we're still here with Rafael Micah's just up the road which should be a good sign for us I assume Dylan Toons also a pretty decent climber so we shouldn't be too far behind that front group ideally but we are in A18 so I think that might be a little bit of a pipe dream as with 0.3k left we're gonna come over the line in 62nd place and hope we didn't lose too much to the people directly in front of us and as we can see after the stage is over, Santiago Butrago actually takes the lead of the race. And we drop from 11th to 16th, we're 8 minutes and 17 seconds back. I mean, the places, in the places, it wasn't that bad of a fall. But time-wise, uh, the best we can hope for is 14th place now, so we're not going to put too much pressure on us on this last stage and just get ready for the classics coming up and that's what we're more suited for anyway but one more stage left and we'll go for a stage win and that final stage will be stage 8 Nice to Nice a 113.5 kilometer medium mountain stage our freshness is very bad but we are in 16th place so we're gonna look to manage our time loss and if we do get to around the end of this last little mountain with the group we can maybe look to try and attack and pinch a stage win but I'm not gonna put too much importance on this as long as we show up and have a decent stage I think we'll be fine and we have decided to jump into the breakaway today with our teammate Julio Chicone because why not we can help him out on the uh, mountains points and try and secure that up for our team and since we're eight minutes back I assume they're not going to mind if we try and ride for a stage win anyway. And with 22k left right at the base of this last climb, Julio Chicone has fallen. And we're going to increase our effort to try and get to the front here so we can potentially make an attack from the bottom of this climb as they're all going to wait for the top because they want those mountain points for some reason as Julio Chicone has already wrapped up the... Uh, mountains jersey but if we come up around around the side here I mean standard Grigard Dunbar everybody's been really strong today it's gonna have to be a perfectly timed move as soon as it flattens out here I think we might be able to get a little gap and if we can recover on the downhill we might be looking at two stage wins here at Perry Nice as our attack we can ramp it up and then just set our effort is no we cannot drop anybody but we're gonna keep pushing on to the top of this hill and fortunately with 13k left we cracked just as we went over the top so we will get a chance to recover at least a little bit of stamina there is a group of four riders off the front and I don't think we're gonna have the stamina to catch them but maybe the group can pull them back and 
we have some kind of an outside shot at a top five, but we'll have to see once we get to the bottom of the Goldie Aze. And with 5k to go, we have managed to stay with this front group, which is good for our final position in the GC as Fred Wright and Fred and uh, Michael Matthews are way behind us. And now we only have 2.5k left and we have a ton of stamina that we can use to try and come around as with about 0.9 we're going to go ahead and launch our sprint because we don't have the stamina to quite keep up with the Akafool sign. But if we do get close enough, we will finish on the same time as Damien Tuza, Valentin Madua, and Bob Stannard round out the podium for Stage 8. As we come across in 13th place with a pretty big gap to some people that were ahead of us in the GC standings. And for the final GC, we do not enter the top 10, but that was expected. All the favorites were pretty much there towards the end of the race. And in best climber, Julio Chicone actually does fall to Derek G. So that final fall before the Col d'Aze ended up being very painful for Kofi Dis, as Quinn Simmons also wins the points classification and young rider classification that we finished third in, four minutes and 48 seconds back. And again, we do end up coming in 13th place, which is a lot better than 16th in my opinion. We do get a top 15 at Perry Nice in our first time riding it, which is pretty good for a younger rider. And as the month ticks over to April, we do get our first look at the teams that we could be riding for next season. And there are a lot of World Tour teams interested in Vladimir Saracen. So right now, Bahrain Victorious is the best squad that we could ride for next season. And Kofidis, definitely not out of the question. The squad is going to be strong next year, and they should return to the World Tour. But there are a lot of interesting options here, even all the way down to Tudor Pro Cycling, who is the weakest team we could ride for next year. I think most likely we're going to be looking at one of the teams on this list right here. But we have made it to April 2nd, and my personal favorite race to watch, the Ronde von Vlandren, a 258.8 kilometer hilly cobble stage that I think we should have a decent shot to finish pretty high here, but if we take a look at the favorites, it is the usual cast here, Mathieu van der Poel, Dylan van Barla, Wout van Aert, Stefan Kung, Matej Mohoric, Mads Pedersen, Valentin Madwa. Ben Turner, Tish Benut, Christophe Laporte. I mean, there's definitely going to be a ton of competition here, but as long as we stay calm and we don't chase down every attack that goes up the road, I think we'll be in with a decent shot at a pretty good finish here. And with about 70k to go, this has been a pretty tame addition of the Ronde von Vlandren so far. No attacks going up the road from the big hitters quite yet and this one Vanderpool and Van Aert like to attack from a long way out but right now we're sitting very comfortably the break is only three minutes ahead and it's only six men so I don't think we're gonna have a hard time pulling that back but for right now we're in a great position and Jumbo Visma already using up most of their riders as the group splits into two at just this second as Dele decides to go up the road, but I don't know if we're going to follow that just yet. I think we're going to wait with Mathieu van der Poel and Wout van Aert, because I think they're more likely to stay ahead towards the end. And with 50k to go, disaster, we have fallen. Luckily, the peloton is back together, but Tish Benut is up the road, but we are still here with van Aert and van der Poel, so hopefully... That won't affect us too much towards the end of the race, but it's looking pretty dicey right now. And with 30k to go, we are going up the Quermont, and this break is managing to stay away. Van Barla and Tish Benut both up the road. We are trying to push the pace ourselves. So Alpecin de Kunic just not doing a great job of pulling this back for Mathieu Vanderpool just yet. As we are in a group of 27 riders, we should have the strength to pull this back, but 
it's going to take a lot of effort between right now and the finish line. And with 21k to go, Vanderpool starting to make his move towards the front. We are going up the Quermont for the last time, which means an attack is about to happen, I would assume, unless he's just playing it way too safe today. And that attack might have to come from us. Vanderpool's starting to ride away. We're going to go ahead and attack. If we can get out from behind these riders that are blocking us off, trying to stay with Vanderpool. Well, Van Aert following us up the Quermont for the last time, but we are not going to be able to stick to his wheel, and we are also not going to be able to stick with Wout Van Aert, which isn't super surprising, but when we're this far away from the break, I was hoping for a little bit better of a result today. And with about 10k left to go, we have found ourselves in A3. There are five riders in front of us and nine riders in a group with us currently, but it looks like we're not going to be able to pull back those riders in front of us right now. We got Tom Pidcock, Stefan Kuhn, Mads Pedersen, and Ben Healy, but Alberto Betiol doing a good job of chasing his teammate back, which is a strange one. Uh, if you watch the uh, Team Sky Career Mode series, you might see a, a certain British team doing the exact same thing in the last episode, but right now we're going to have to manage our energy. Top 5 looks to be out of the question, but a top 10 definitely isn't. We just have to manage our pace to the end, and right now we're riding on Mate Mohoric's coattails, but with 3k left, we'll use our energy gel. I don't think it's going to do us any good. We've still got a 20 second gap to the group behind us, and I think we should be able to ride Mate Mohoric off the wheel. It looks like he's spent as the leaders come across the line right now. It's going to be Mathieu van der Poel. Finishing first, followed by Wout Van Aert, Mads Pedersen, Stefan Kuhn, Alberto Betiol, and Tom Pidcock. But it looks like we are going to get a top 10 at the Ronde van Vlaanderen, coming in ninth place just ahead of Mate Mohoric, and that is a terrific result for us. We were gunning for top 5, but we will absolutely take a top 10. And with that top 10 finish in the Ronde van Vlaanderen, we do get 15 points, and that is going to be enough for us to level up. And we will get a skill point. And next level, if we choose the right category, it might be the last chance in the series for us to get better. And with our new skill point, I think we're going to put it into network. Because now with the World Tour teams looking a little interested in us, I think having more contacts of interest will be good for us to kind of steer which direction we want our career to go in. And the races keep coming thick and fast with our next monument, Perry roubaix the Hell of the North, a 263.5 kilometer flat cobble stage. And if you've ever seen this before, you know it's going to be torture. I don't really think this is a race for us. We will try to finish as high as we can, but I doubt we'll be there at the end. I think this is going to be more for Frank Bonamore, who's better on the flats and has a better sprint finish. Maybe Max Walshide as well. 76 cobbles, 78 on the flat. I think we're probably going to be used to try and get Walshide up there and see if he can maybe get a top 10. And we have had to work a little bit for it, but we are into the breakaway for the day with our teammate Alexis Renard, Mark Hirschi also up here, Sed Buellens. So this uh, this breakaway looks like it should have a decent shot as long as everybody works together. There are some pretty strong riders up here. And with just over 50k left, we still have a small advantage to the peloton, but as you can see by the stamina usage on the riders just on our team, it has been a brutal day for them trying to catch back up to us as we're looking to save some stamina over these cobbles. But still in a pretty okay position. Walshide in the group with us now. I think we're probably going to have to look to make a move for him, if not just ourselves. And with 47k left, the peloton has caught back up to us. And Matthew Vanderpoel up here looking... Fresh as a daisy. Maybe the break wasn't the best call, but 
think realistically we didn't really have a shot at this race anyway. So we eventually do crack over the Monzon Pevele and we will fall back probably for the rest of the race. I'll see you at the end. And with 3.5k left, we did bonk pretty hard, just fell back for most of the end of the race. Matthew Vanderpool, Mate Mohoric, Wout Van Aert took it, but we just did not have the fitness today, as we're going to go ahead and sprint around and get ourselves a couple of positions as we come across the line in 64th place. And that will bring us to the last race of the episode, Liege, Baston Liege, a 254.9 kilometer hilly course that uh, normally would be something we would lick our lips at, but today our fitness at 85%, our tiredness really drug us down in Perry roubaix We needed a rest week. We got a rest week, but we weren't able to recoup in time to be in top fitness. So I'm not expecting a big result for us, but we do have Julio Chicone and Maxim Van Hills we can work for, but if there's another opportunity to get into a breakaway, we might look to capitalize on it. And with 57.5k left to go, we are 2 minutes 45 seconds behind the leaders as Quinn Simmons getting to the front. We're going to have to react to that. We cannot let him and Primoz Roglic get too far ahead so it looks like a move is going to be made sooner rather than later but for right now we're just gonna sit up and wait for them to do something as it looks like he's calmed down I really would not like him to attack right here but FDJ up here polling for most of the day I don't know who they're racing for but Yumbo Visma has been suspiciously quiet. And with 40k left, Roglic did make an attack, but we were luckily able to pull it back as Vlasa, Vanderpool, Ayuso, Paulus, and Simmons go up the road. We're going to try and stick to the back of them. We cannot afford to let that group of five riders go, and we are just achingly short of them right now, about 10 seconds. And it looks like we are going to catch, so we're going to sit up. But as we do, Matthew Vanderpool immediately goes. We don't have the best legs today, but we're going to go ahead and try to attack with him, maybe catch up and save a little time on this downhill. And we have made it to that next climb with a 17-second advantage over the peloton just behind Matthew Vanderpool, the Côte de la Redoute, and our legs in a pretty okay spot as the peloton does catch up we just want to stick with a front group of riders it doesn't really matter who is there starting to attack around us thankfully we do still have the legs to keep up with them barely 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 as we make it over the Côte de la Redoute and Laurence Le Plus did attack over the top there so this little broken up peloton is desperately trying to pull him back and we're just gonna set our pace to 92 and keep trying to make it over these little hills and sticking with the group and put the onus on them to pull back Lawrence de Plus and Ben Tullet as now some unlikely names starting to make their way towards the front of the race and with just under 15 K left our stamina did take a pretty big hit there, but we are coming up to the last climb of the day. And we still have a tiny bit of energy left as Alexander Vlasov goes. I don't I would assume he's not the one that's going to win the stage, but Ben Tullet, Vlasov, Quinn Simmons finally making his move as we do not have enough energy to actually attack. We're gonna try and get over the last hill just in front of the rest of these riders, but we barely barely crack and now we've lost the front group we're gonna try our best to recover a little bit but I think that's probably gonna be the end of our race and with 4.3k left unfortunately it does look like that was our last chance to stay with the front group as we are now three minutes behind the leaders but it looks like we could still come away with a pretty decent finish here as Vlasov, Simmons and Tullet 
take the podium. And we are not too far behind, but we are almost completely out of stamina back here with Max Pool and Lorenzo Rota. We're just going to go ahead and pace ourselves and come in behind these two. And we will come across the line in 26th place. And that will bring to an end episode 15 of our Pro Cyclist Career Mode with Vladimir Saracen. We did get a stage win, some decent results, and enough to make us pretty excited for the future here. And with the teams we're going to be looking at for next season, I think we could be a real force come 2026. But as always, I wanted to say thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to leave a like, to subscribe. I put out at least one video of this every week and one video of our Team Sky career mode. But for now, just wanted to say again, thank you and see you later.